What we were been discussing international standards and their role in international trade. You had your speech about, uh, of course, how it works in the. Con I mean, for an economist, why do we need standardization? What, are the, what is your take in a couple of sentences? I mean, what would be the main, the, the basic rationale for standardizing international products and services? I think, as I said, I mean, in principle, you wouldn't wish to use standards in order to uh, sort of uh, uh, facilitate trade and make it easier for value chains to uh, to uh, sort of work uh, and, and producers work to work together in value chains. And uh, obviously, what I said is, uh, okay, this this is uh, um, the, the effect of uh, of standards is uh, is not uh, so simple in some cases. Um, standards can be abused, let's put it this way, and uh, in this case, or, or not even, I mean, it's not necessarily that they get abused, but they may uh, have an, an ambiguous, they have an ambiguous effect on trade. They do, do not always uh, uh, help uh, increase trade. But I mean, from, I think, uh, in, in many cases, the main reason why you, you want to introduce standards, yeah, when, when you consider the, the international uh, uh, trade level uh, is because they they would uh, sort of make it easier for firms to work together and and they would solve a number of market failures for consumers and, uh, and so that's that's why you want to have them. Walter, you explained a little bit how the different, let's say, institutional structure. I use the term in very neutral manner of the EU and the US has an impact on their success in exporting the regulatory models at the international level. Can you take us through this argument with a little bit? Well, before I do that, let me just say that um, international standard setting is a growing reality, but um, and it does have welfare effects. But it would be naive to assume that this is just you know good for everyone. There are going to be winners and losers in these processes, and I think it's an important exercise to figure out exactly why some uh, players win and some lose as we move from domestic standards to international standards. In some ways, that is what I've been trying to uh, understand. And unlike uh, political economy approaches from economics, I'm focusing at the politics that is actually happening within a few very important um, focal standard setting organizations. Focal in the sense that they are uh, single and uncontested. Uh, and they are where everyone goes to do standards and get standards. But again, participation is oftentimes contested and fundamentally every little player is trying to push his or her technical preferences into these international standards. So the politics of this process, I think, is what uh, is uh, missing in a lot of analysis and that is what I've been focusing on. No, this is I mean, I think the I guess, I mean, that where we all agree is that the welfare implications could be overall positive or negative, but the distributional right. effects could be will be asymmetric. There will be winners and losers. Absolutely. Now, if we move to today's discussion, uh, let's start with Mark again. Mark, I mean, how did you see the participation of the uh, various people who attended the seminar here today? I think I, I was fairly impressed because I mean, many of the participants uh, uh, know the topic. They they are very. Uh, Interested, very keen to learn, very uh, uh, and and keen to participate. So I I really um, uh, thought it was a, a very interesting um, sort of group of people, and uh, and and enjoy, I enjoyed uh, actually you know uh, working with them and, and uh, exchanging <laughs> views with them. Volti? Well, for me as a political scientist, it's always very refreshing to talk to. Um, International trade experts who specialize, uh, uh, you know, uh, in this area, or or practitioners and or economists. We have different perspectives. I think we complement each other, and that is the beauty of such a, a meeting. Uh, you're sensitized to things that you were, you, you may not have understood, or or you may have taken for granted. So it's a very refreshing exchange.